Gonadotropins is the topic of the screencast, which may be found in Chapter 9 of your textbook. The screencast was designed to achieve the following objectives. Describe the sequence of events that lead to the secretion of gonadotropic hormones. Describe the effects of follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone in males and females. Describe the chemistry and the effects of testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. Describe the regulation of gonadotropic hormone secretion. Gonadotropic hormones are absolutely essential for the normal and proper growth and maturation of the gonads in juveniles. In adults which already, who already have fully developed gonads, gonadotropic hormones are essential for maintaining normal functioning of those gonads. Hyposecretion of gonadotropic hormones in juveniles may result in the failure of the reproductive system to fully develop, and in adults, hyposecretion of gonadotropic hormones can cause a loss of normal function of the gonads and possibly atrophy. Let's discuss what stimulates the release of the gonadotropins. In the hypothalamus, cells secrete a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. That hormone is carried to the anterior pituitary gland where it causes the secretion of the gonadotropins, follicle stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone. Those hormones enter the systemic circulation and are taken to the gonads where they bind specific target cells. Now let's look at how gonadotropins ensure the proper functioning of the ovaries. Follicle stimulating hormone is so named because it stimulates the development of ovarian follicles. Before ovulation can occur, follicles have to go through a process of development or ripening. As the follicles develop, they release estrogen. Only a fully formed or developed follicle can rupture to release an oocyte. While follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the development of a follicle, it does not actually cause ovulation. Once we have a fully formed follicle, luteinizing hormone triggers the rupture of that follicle, releasing the, the oocyte, and this is called ovulation. What remains of the ruptured follicle is the corpus luteum, and the corpus luteum produces another female sex hormone called progesterone. So in females, the gonadotropins act on tissues of the ovaries. The follicle-stimulating hormone stimulates the development of ovarian follicles, and as those follicles develop, they secrete estrogen. Luteinizing hormone triggers rupturing of a mature follicle to release an oocyte. This process is called ovulation. What remains of the ruptured follicle is the corpus luteum, and it secretes the hormone progesterone. As follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone levels in the blood rise, they feed back onto the anterior pituitary gland and the hypothalamus, decreasing the release of further luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. Estrogen, which is produced by the maturing follicles under the stimulation of follicle-stimulating hormone, has several functions. One is it is responsible for the expression of secondary sex characteristics, such as growth of hair in the pubic region, in the armpits, as well as the deposition of fat on various parts of the body, such as the hips. Estrogen also is responsible for proper growth, development, and maintenance of female reproductive organs. Estrogen helps prepare the uterus to receive a fertilized egg if one is present. And once a fertilized egg implants into the walls of the uterus, estrogen helps maintain pregnancy. Estrogen also helps prepare the breasts to produce milk. Progesterone, which is released by the corpus luteum, 
works with estrogen to prepare the breast to produce milk and to maintain pregnancy. In addition, progesterone also helps bring about the menstrual cycle. Let me add also that estrogen and progesterone are both steroid hormones. In men, follicle stimulating hormones targets the Sertoli cells and stimulates the production of spermatozoa by those cells. Luteinizing hormone targets the Leydig cells which release testosterone. Testosterone is responsible for the secondary sex characteristics in men such as hair on the face and chest, deeper voice, larger skeletal muscles, and thicker bones. Testosterone also promotes the growth, maturation, and maintenance of the male reproductive system organs. Testosterone also works with follicle stimulating hormone to stimulate the production of sperm. As testosterone levels rise, it inhibits further release of the gonadotropins or further release of the gonadotropin releasing hormones from the hypothalamus through classic negative feedback inhibition. Now let's review the objectives of this screencast. Describe the sequence of events that leads to the secretion of gonadotropic hormones. Describe the effects of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone in males and females. Describe the chemistry and the effects of testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. Describe the regulation of gonadotropic hormone secretion. You're now at the end of this module. I know that you are utterly relieved.